Hey folks, I want to talk to you about exponential functions, and this is actually our part two. So check out my last one if you want to see part one. All right, so some definitions here that you need to know. Any number raised to zero is equal to one. So 10 raised to zero power, one. Five raised to zero power, one. B, some letter even, raised to the power zero equals one. The only exception to this, the only exception at all, is zero. Zero raised to the zero power is undefined. We can't define that thing because, I mean, zero raised to itself, or zero times itself, a zero number of times, it's just weird. It just doesn't happen. So we don't really see that often, but we have to know that it is undefined. Now, negative exponents, they get smaller instead of getting bigger. So if I have five squared equals 25, well, five to the negative two equals one over 25. The reason for that is, Right? If I have a 5 to the negative 2, to make that exponent positive, I'm actually going to make a fraction, and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. So there's now a 1 on top, and instead of 5 to the negative 2, it's a 5 to the positive 2, but it's on the bottom of my fraction. Same thing with this next example. 10 cubed equals 1,000, but 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 1,000, and that's because it's actually now... 10 to the negative third power is like 1 over 10 cubed. Okay, when I move across that division bar, right, when I move this down, it changes its sign from negative to positive. Let's go check out some more examples. So here, I need to evaluate. That means give me a number. What is this number? Okay, evaluate is like solve kind of, except there's sometimes not an equal sign. You just have to tell me what does this thing equal. If I were to simplify it, what do you get? 2 to the negative 1. Okay, well, remember, that's like 1 over 2 to the positive 1. And what is 2 to the first power? That's just 1, 2 times itself. Okay, that's it. It's just 1, 2 sitting there. So that's just 1 half. Now I have 2 to the third power, but it's a negative, which means I have 2 to the third power as a denominator to a fraction. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 again, which is 8. So that's 1 over 8. You can also punch that into a calculator, but most of the time I want to see this as a fraction. This next one, a plus b all raised to the 0. Remember, anything raised to the 0 power is going to be 1. Yep, that is right, 1. Just a 1. No need to write anything else. That is a 1. That is it. And then 3 to the first power, that's just 3 times itself one time. So that's just 3. I'm now done. Nice. Next ones. All right, 5x to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is, you guessed it, 1. And that's it. Nothing else to do there. Now this next one, a little bit more tricky. I have 5 to the negative 1. Well, that part alone is like a 1 over Five, right? I'm just simplifying my numerator, or my top part of my fraction here. 5 to the negative 1 is like 1 over 5 to the positive 1. And then 5 to the 0. What is anything to the 0 power other than 0? 1. So my denominator here is 1. And what is 1 fifth? Or, uh, 1 over 5 to the first? That's just 1 fifth. And if I divide anything by 1, it just stays whatever it was. So this actually stays a 1 fifth. If your teacher allows you to use calculators, you can do one divided or one over five divided by one, enter, and if it gives you a decimal, then you hit math button on your calculator and then enter, enter, and it should give you it as a fraction. But this also wasn't too scary, right? If I'm dividing anything by one, it just stays the same. My next examples get a little bit more tricky. I'm actually rewriting it as a negative exponent. So I'm given stuff with positive exponents, I wanna make them negative. So over here on the left, I have a 1 over 3 squared. I don't want that to be 3 squared. I want it to be a 3 to the negative 2. So I have to move it up in this case. This next one, same situation. I have a positive 1 exponent in my denominator. So I need to keep my parentheses. But I need to make it a negative 1. And that means it goes on top of my fraction. But I usually don't have to write that part of the fraction then. Just leave it as parentheses x, y, parentheses to the negative 1 exponent. The next one, my 4 is already on top. It's going to stay there. It doesn't have. It just has an exponent of 1. We're not going to tweak it. I have to start with this x squared, and I have to move it up to the top. If I move something across that division bar, it changes its sign 
to a negative, or if it was negative, to a positive. All right, you see that is it. That's all I've got for you. Have a great day, everybody, and hopefully you'll learn something.